86. Hampton's quack halfback made a spurt around Clay's left end for a gain of seven yards, putting the ball in Clay's 30-yard line. <laughs> cheering section seems to be getting worried. The score is six to nothing in Hampton's favor, and I think Hampton's getting stronger every minute. The only man who doesn't seem to be worrying is that cunning old fox, Coach Harlow of Clay. Harlow's been holding back his ace in the hole, Harold Grange, better known to fans as Red. Clay's demon halfback, whose sensational work with Buddy Corson last season made them the most talked of pair in college football. <laughs> Too long, boy. Clay can't win now. Not even if he runs in grains and cotton. Yeah. It looks like we take the suckers money in chunks this time without having fixed the game. I tell you, Zach, what do you think you are? We want grains! We want grains! We want grains! How about grains? With less than five minutes to play, Coach Harlow is sending in Red Grains, the galloping ghost and they sidekick Buddy Corson, but it looks as if he's expecting a miracle. Still Hampton's ball. Oh, wait a minute, folks. It looks like a fumble. It is a fumble. It's Clay's ball on Hampton's 40-yard line. They've still got a chance, but it's a mighty slim one. We've got to stop Gray. Hit me. Gray. 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 I know. I know. What did I tell you? They haven't got a chance. Plays ball. Less than a minute to play. Forty yards from the goal line. Give me a tip today on one of them, and it looks like we might get something on him. Yeah? What's the weak spot? Gee, buddy, girls sure are a wonderful institution, aren't they? Yeah, some girls. Yeah. Some girl. 
Say, Red, you don't mean you've got mixed up with some dizzy dame, do you? Who, me? Why, I... Hey, Red, the coach wants to see you in his room. Okay. Come in. Did you send for me, coach? Yes. Buddy hasn't been breaking training, has he, Red? No, sir, not Buddy. You'd say that whether he had or not. Afraid I don't get you, coach. He's not up to his usual form. Something is wrong with him. Is he worried about anything? Well, nothing I know of, but... Uh... But what? Now that you mention it, I have noticed he seems under a strain lately. But I don't think it's anything to worry over. I'm not so sure it isn't serious. I've heard rumors. Rumors? What do you mean? What sort of rumors? <coughs> I don't believe there's anything to the rumors, but I'll certainly keep my eyes open. That's all I want to know. Now get to bed before lights out. I'll have to bench you Saturday. Thank you. Good night, Red. Good night. Buddy. Buddy. Step on it, he's following. He won't follow far. <laughs> Me. I, I thought we were held up. What's the matter? Everything. Follow that tail light you see up ahead. They're turning down that side road. I can't can't do that. I, I got a couple of trunks in here I'm just taking home, and, and the meter says for four dollars. But you must. Get rid of them. I'll give you ten dollars. Yeah. Give me ten? Watch me get, get rid of them. Uh, will you get out and give me a push and help to roll it? Sure, we can push it. Nice, the fella. Come sure. on, get right out. We'll now, 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 you, 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 you boys pu pu push on it. You understand? I get the motor on. Push that car or not? Ah, oh, sure we did. We're pushers. <laughs> I 
drank. The only time I ever drank any of that stuff, I made the biggest mistake of my life. You don't mean you're sorry you married me, do you, buddy? Oh, why shouldn't I be? It's probably wrecked my whole life. The school had fired me off the team and my family disowned me. They knew. Oh, I see. You're ashamed of me. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself. I broke training to get here. Why did you send for me? Who has a better right? You seem to forget, dear, that we're married, whether you like it or not. You needn't broadcast it to the world. Why did you send for me? Money, I suppose. How much? Oh, I think I could get by on a thousand and not bother you anymore. Thousand? How would I get a thousand dollars? I think your father might come across. Are you threatening to go to my father and tell him about our marriage? Threatening? Do I have to threaten you, dear? Um, I've got orders to pick up a certain party here. Okay. Well, I, uh, uh thanks. Huh? Well, I'll do all I can, but I, I don't think I can raise a thousand. You see, I... Come on, buddy. Let's get out of this. It's Red Green. Here's our chance to put both of these babies out of Saturday's game. How? Oh. You're still superintendent of the Mogul Taxi Company, aren't you? Well, sure. All right, get out there to your cab line and tell your drivers to stand by for trouble. Come on, buddy, let's go. You can't go, Red. You don't understand. I do understand all I need to. You've broken faith with the college and with the team. And you're going out of here with me if I have to drag you. You've gone far enough, Red. You're not running my life. You can't interfere with our guests. You're going out. Yeah, I'm going out, and this fellow's going far enough. Out with him. Get him out of here. Oh, oh my We didn't get Grange, but we sure got the dope on Buddy Carson. Come on. She's in my cab. Well? Are you figuring on playing in that game today? Of course. Why? Well, you're not. Unless you brought me that thousand dollars. 
Remember, you're a married man. And if I told the coach... Oh, you wouldn't do that. You mustn't do it. I've got to play in the game. I've got to play today. Then that thousand quick. Well, where am I going to get a thousand dollars now? I'll tell you where you can get it. Now, how about it? All right. You're finding up that runway in the freight house. You can't do that. You're not that kind of a fellow. Give me that money. What money? Don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Give me that money. You can't have it. Tell me who the crook is that thought he could buy you. I saw myself. I saw myself to keep from being disgraced. And I won't give it to you now. You poor fool. You think you can save yourself from one disgrace by plunging into another? Don't you realize what you've done? You've sold out your college. Sold out your team. Oh, buddy, you can't do it. I won't let you. It's too late now, Red. I can't give it up. I tell you, I can't give it up. Then I'll have to take it from you. You're not going crawling. Oh, no, you won't. Give it to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cortland's fixed. You can get your bets down. That's great work, Sherman. Boy, here's what we clean up big. You're really becoming quite expert. Well, why not? Look at the expert instruction I've had. Oh, thanks. <laughs> hello, Mr. Alton. Oh, hello, Steve. Uh, say, will you look over both planes while we're at the game? Uh, I telephoned for a car. Do you know whether it's here yet? Yes, sir. Waiting over the hangar. Fine. Well, anytime you're ready, we'll be on our way. We're practically there. All right. What's the matter? Everything's about it. You spent our money for nothing. What are you talking about? Listen. Here we are, right here. How's that, all right? I saw it. Well, you're going to have to do something. We put our shirts on this game, and we stand to lose everything. No, we don't. It's the surest thing to never know. Take it in. 
We can prove it. Now, these charges are ridiculous. I know, Grange. I beg your pardon, Mr. Hollow. But I'm here on behalf of Miss Cortland. She has reason to believe something has happened to her brother. Grange with those charges? Why, sure we are. Football is one spot that's got to be kept clean. Sorry to be late, Coach. It couldn't be helped. Where's Cortland? Why, the last I heard of him was at the railroad station. So we understand. You believe I've done something with Buddy on the strength of an anonymous letter? No. On the testimony, of two eyewitnesses. These two gentlemen claim they saw you beat up Buddy Cortland and lock him in a boxcar. Haven't you anything to say, Red? Can't you explain? No. I have nothing to say. You mean it's true. You deliberately put Cortland out of the game. You crippled your team. You betrayed your colleagues. No, not that. I haven't betrayed my colleagues. I can't explain, but I swear I'm not guilty. Telegraph to Mr. Harlow. Here. You still deny your guilt? Boys, the wire is from the chief of police of Coinville and reads, Cortland here under doctor's care, was beaten and locked in boxcar by Grange. Hint at bribery, but will talk to no one but you. Well, do you still insist you are innocent? I do, and I'm willing to stand by Buddy's story. Get up, Grange. You've earned it. Boys, I'm going to Buddy right after the game. I want to tell him that you fellas went out against odds and won in spite of your betrayal. All right. We'll play without you today, Grange. a hard blow to Miss Cortland. She and Grains were very good friends. <laughs> Say, listen, we may be in a jam yet. That's why I didn't mean what Hollow thought of you. Do you think that Cortland intends to tell the truth? Yeah. And we've got to beat them to Coinville and close his mouth. Come on. Barbara! Five dollars if you get that car. I 
I hope you find Buddy all right. I wish I were going with you. Be sure and warm your motor up before you take off. But Mr. Elton knows only what he heard, and besides that... I... I said I didn't care to discuss the matter. But I tell you, Barbara, you've got to listen. I, I have a time to listen. I'm going to my brother. breaking. It's no use. The chute will carry you, but not both of us. I'm going to leave. No, no, Red, you mustn't. No, no, Red, don't. I'm leaving. Goodbye. And please don't believe I sold out, for I didn't. <laughs> Irene, an ex-showgirl to whom Buddy is secretly married, and whose demands for money led him to accept the gambler's bribe. Hurrying to the hospital is Harlow, the football coach, anxious to get Buddy's story so he can break the betting ring. Hot on the coach's trail are two agents of the gambling ring, bent on keeping Buddy from telling his story. Meanwhile, Barbara Cortland, Buddy's sister, is flying to his bedside, unaware that her plane is defective and her life in danger. In another plane, George Elton, Barbara Souter, is flying to her aid. While Red Grange, Buddy's pal, has boarded Barbara's plane at the risk of his life in the hope of rescuing her. Barbara! 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 You better wire through. You'll crack up if you don't land. Well, I stand to stay at landing. No! It's starting to go now. Look! Have you got another shoot? No, there's only one. You bail out. I'll take my chance. Just want to use the one shoot. It may support us both. There's too much weight for the shoot. The strings are breaking. It's no use. The chute will carry you, but not both of us. I'm going to leave. No, no, Red, you mustn't. No, no, Red, don't. I'm leaving. Goodbye. And please don't believe I sold out, for I didn't. <laughs>
You all right? I think so. You're sure lucky. I thought for a while we couldn't make it. I know. When I get my whip, I'll try to thank you. Second wait. Right now, I think Barbara needs some attention. Come on. A man who would sacrifice himself the way Red did for me can't be guilty of the things you told me. Well, I certainly hope so, Miss Carton. But supposing we wait till we get to Coinville and hear your brother's story. Come on, we'll all have to go in your plane now. My plane's out of commission, I'm afraid. Let's get over on the road and take the first car that comes along. and he has a bad cut on his head. You. You slugged me. Afraid I'd get to Buddy Cortland and hear his story. Mr. Harlow, he couldn't have done it. We were with him. My man, he saved your life. Saved my life? I'm sorry, Red. I figured you were the only person who would want to keep me from reaching Cortland. There are plenty of people who would go to any length to keep you from hearing Cortland's story. Who was in the car that passed you? That's it. I, I remember now. That car was passing me when... Quick, Red, take the wheel. We've got to get to Coinville before something happens to Buddy. to throw the game and then let Red Grange take it away from you. And now you're going to start turning yellow and spill the whole story. What a prize that you're making of yourself. Yeah. Beginning the night I married you. Well, from now on, you're going to start being smart and I'm going to teach you. You're not going to tell Harlow anything. What you know is too valuable to give away. I don't get you. You've got the dope on that gambling ring. And from now on, they're going to give us our cut, just for keeping quiet. You... You mean blackmail? Well, I'll call it what you like. You tell me who the higher-ups are, and I'll see that they pay plenty. And you really expect me to do that? Just to get money for you? Well, after all, you're my husband, you know. And I'm entitled to some consideration. Speak up. Who's the big shot? I'll tell only Harlow so he can drive these crooked gamblers out of football. I hope you say that, buddy. All the guys I've known have been rotters. I'm glad I married somebody that's only up and up. I'll go out now and let you rest so that you can talk to Harlow when he comes. Well, uh, just as I expected. That darling husband of mine has a good in a gambling ring and he won't give it up. That is, he thinks he won't. Time to waste. We've got to get him out of here before Harlow arrives. Oh, uh, how can we do it? He won't budge till he sees Harlow. That's easy. Put him to sleep. Safe? Absolutely. Safe. 
Unless you use more than one. <laughs> but never caught a glimpse of it. It came this way, but we've lost track of him. There's no use looking any further. We'd better get back to Buddy. got away with talking. We've got to get him before Grange does.
Show that bl 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 blonde that she can't get away with that. With him is Barbara Cortland, his roommate's sister, who shares Red's anxiety about her brother, but does not know the facts in the case. In the boat which they are pursuing, Barbara's brother Buddy lies unconscious, a victim of crooked gamblers who bribed him to betray his college team. Buddy is being spirited away by a girl named Irene, to whom he is secretly married in defiance of the college rules. Assisting Irene is a mysterious cripple who seems bent on ruining Buddy. Meanwhile, on the wharf from which the pursuit started, the football coach has arrived too late to join in the chase. With him is George Elton, a wealthy clubman who is the unsuspected head of the gambling ring. 
We can't go back till we get the man we're after. We've got the man we're after. What do you mean? You're under arrest to prevent a murder. Murder? Yeah, we know why you were after that boat, you fool. The people in that boat are getting away with Miss Cortland's brother. I was following them to rescue him. Ask Miss Cortland if you don't believe me. about this case? We know all about it. I'm Coach Harlow of Clay College, and this is Red Grange. He was chasing a boat in which Miss Cortland's brother was being kidnapped. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Grange. The man that informed me about you was the one to help the kidnappers escape. There may still be time to catch them. You head back along the waterfront, and we'll follow the coast in a car. Full speed ahead, Bill. Oh, 
Well, I'm so glad, buddy. I thought you were, were dead. Dead? Buddy? Who's Buddy? Well, you're Buddy. Don't you know me? I'm Irene, your wife. Irene? Who's Irene? I don't know you. Oh, my head. It hurts. Everything's so strange. No use. He's suffering from amnesia, the result of that blow. Amnesia? What do you mean? Loss of memory. He doesn't remember anything that happened prior to the blow. How long will it last? Maybe a few days, and maybe forever. A sweet mess. I risk my neck to get him where I can squeeze the truth out of him, and look what I draw. Information with a fortune locked up in a cracked nut. I'd have sworn they swung into one of these waterways. Yeah, but which one? It looks like they've given us the slip. Well, there's that taxi that is down at the wharf. That guy's a friend of Red Grange. And do you suppose he's trailing us? Well, if he is, He's sure heading into trouble. Buddy's disappearance removes the only clue we had to the gambling ring, this corrupting college football. Not the only clue. I still have the bribe money you think I took to throw the game. These bills are new. I may be able to trace the serial numbers through the bank. This note was with the money, and handwriting can be identified. Do you still deny that you were bribed with the money right in your hand? Denial without proof is useful, but I'll find the proof. I'll uncover this gambling ring and smash it if it's the last thing I do. That deliberately. I know they did. But why? I'll bet they were after me and got you by mistake. I know those guys. They're the outside men for the mobile taxi company. And they're trying to put us out of business. It's the ball. 
sure got us out of that mess. I'd have caught them if you hadn't done that. Why, uh, I was trying to force them off the road. I didn't know you were anywhere around. Come on, Reg. I know where those bozos are heading. That's a good idea, Grange. You two follow them. We'll get to the nearest phone and call the police. Okay, let her rip, Jerry. Yeah, we shook them, boss, thanks to you. They won't bother us anymore. Don't kid yourself. That taxi driver knows you and Mullen. Grange is hot on your trail. He's got the Cortland bribe money on the note. Get that evidence and put them both out of business. It means our necks if you fail.
Our scandal in college football centers around Red Grange, star halfback of the Clay University team. Accused of accepting a bribe to throw a game, Red is shielding the real culprit, his pal, Buddy Cortland, who has lost his memory as the result of a blow on the head. Buddy has been spirited away by Irene, a girl whom he married secretly in defiance of the college rules, and by a mysterious cripple whose actions stamp him as an enemy of Red's. Red and a taxi driver named Jerry are on the trail of the crooked gamblers who caused Buddy's downfall. They fall into a trap set by George Elton, a well-known clubman, who is secretly the head of the gambling ring. Elton, who hopes to marry Buddy's sister, Barbara, has given orders to silence Red and destroy the evidence of Buddy's bribery, which Red has in his possession. <laughs> Look out! Give me a chance! 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 Give Soon be over. Yeah. This wasn't a taxi brawl, boys. Uh, no. Oh, this was a frame-up to destroy this evidence. What evidence? Bribe money I'm accused of taking to throw a football game. But who'd want to destroy good money? Yeah. Why, the gambling ring. They're afraid that the handwriting on this note and the serial numbers on these bills will convict them. Oh. oh. If that's the case, we'd better get back to my office quick and lock that up in the safe. It's a good idea. Mm, you we'll drop this fellow off at the nearest police station. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I'll bail you out. I'll have a lawyer down there with bail right away. Well, you keep your mouth shut and don't tell the cops anything. What's the trouble? That was Adams falling from jail. Gray's got the evidence on him and had him pinched. We gotta bail him out. Oh, we ought to let him rot in jail, the bungling fool. It's our finish of Gray's facing those bills to the bank to help him. Hey, we got a chance yet if we act quick. Ranger's locking the evidence up and the independent taxi company's safe. Adams managed to slip me the dope. All right, you take care of Adams. I'll call Elton up. It's his finish as well as ours if we don't get back that evidence. Hello. It, it'll be safe here until, until the bank opens tomorrow. It's got to be safe if I have to stay here and guard it with a gun. Hey, that, that, that's a good, good idea, Ray. And listen. Now that you're not on the t -t team anymore, why don't you come and go in business with uh, uh, us, huh? Yes, friend. Oh, we need a fighter like you. Thanks, boys. But I'm still a college student and have to attend class. Any spare time I have, I'll be using to run down the gambling ring. Now I've got to get back to the campus. How about a lift? A lift? From us? Mm -hmm. Sure, we'll give you a lift. And this one won't be on the meter. This one will be on the house, eh? You bet. Come on. Something I can do for you, sir? Yeah, I need a little air in this tire. Sure. 
What's your plan, Chief? Send a good man with this note to the independent garage right away. It's an order from Grange to deliver the evidence out of the safe. From Red Grange himself, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Is everything else okay, sir? Okay, thanks. Hello, fellas. got across. Well, we'll just have to do the best we can. Okay, coach. Whom are you going to use in Granger's place? Come in. Hey, coach, I wanted to tell you. I'll see you down at the field, Frank. Okay, coach. to tell you, Coach, is this. That bribe money you think I took. Need we go into that again? Oh, I know you think I'm guilty, but you'll find out I'm not. Somebody's afraid I'll trace that money and expose the gambling ring. Only an hour ago, they ganged me and took the evidence away. But I managed to get it back. That's what I came to tell you. Here's something you ought to know about. Believe me, they wouldn't give me a chance to prove my innocence. The faculty had no alternative, Red. They had to expel you because you wouldn't come clean. You're holding something back, Grange. Won't you tell me what's on your mind? Won't you come clean, Red? I'm sorry, Coach. I have nothing to say. you, Red? This is Tom down to the garage. Say, Red, is this order okay? Why is this order to deliver the money out of the safe? What? You didn't write it. It's a fake.
What are you doing here? Well, I came here to inquire for you and found this man unconscious on the floor. I know. I was talking to him on the phone and heard him cry for help. Yeah. The money's gone. Tom, have you any idea who did it? No, uh, he hit me from behind. I, I never even got a little glimpse of it. Whoever did it has made a clean getaway. Well, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Tom, you better get across the street and have the doctor look at that cut. Can I borrow one of your caps to take Barbara home? Sure, help yourself, Fred. Hand him a lip, will you, miss? Any one of those cabs, Red. Thanks, Tom. who stole the evidence is still in that room. Oh, why don't you grab him? I'm letting him get away so I can trail him and find out who's behind all this. Run out the corner of the alley and keep your eye on the window. Yes. The fellow we chased in the speedboat. Yes, the man that kidnapped Buddy. I sure had the right hunch not to grab him in the office. I'll trail him and find out what he's done with Buddy. Look, he's getting into a car. Got buddy? I wish you hadn't come, Barbara. I don't like the looks of this at all. You stay in a taxi while I go and investigate. Oh, do be careful, Red. Don't worry. If Buddy's in there, I'll get him out. Anything yet? No, nah, he's still out of his mind. <laughs> Where? Where's Lefty? I set him down cellar for something. Ah. Uh. Uh. So, you don't remember anything, eh? Don't even remember your dear little wife, Irene, eh? Irene? Who's Irene? That's the way he's been all the time. Out of his mind, eh? We'll soon find out whether he is or not. <laughs>
do you mean? What are you going to do? <laughs> I bleed. Must find the boy. You wait at that window. No. Ah, old Jack, come. Keep him quiet. <laughs> A scandal in college football centers around Red Grange, star halfback of the Clay University team. Accused of accepting a bribe to throw a game, Red is shielding the real culprit, his pal, Buddy Cortland, who has lost his memory as a result of a blow on the head. Buddy has been spirited away by Irene, a girl whom he married secretly in defiance of the college rules. Assisting Irene is a mysterious cripple whose actions stamp him as an enemy of Red and Buddy. Red has trailed the mystery man to the deserted house where Buddy is held prisoner. Buddy's sister, Barbara, has accompanied Red in a taxi but has remained in the car. Meanwhile, two agents of the gambling ring that caused Red's downfall are also searching for Buddy to keep him from telling all he knows. I wait. I must find the boy. You wait at that window. When his head comes in, and I'll wait under the tree.
isn't. What have they done to you? Don't look at me like that, buddy. Don't you know me? I'm Barbara, your sister. Leave him alone. He doesn't remember you. He doesn't remember anything. Who are you? I'm his wife, and he's in my care. His wife? Yes, his wife. And I can prove it. And what's more, I'm, I'm not interested in your proof. If you cared anything about Buddy, you wouldn't have brought him here. He's going with us. Is that so? Lefty, come in here. So you thought you'd get away with something? Yeah! All right, Barbara, get Buddy down to the car. Just to avoid complications, get into that closet. Take your lady friend with you. Hey, listen, he'll Bart be... down. He's got the whip in. When I come back, you'll do some explaining. You, you found him. I thought you might need help, so, so I tra tra trailed you. That's great, Sherry. You take Barbara and Buddy into town. I'm going back and question our blonde friend. Oh, but Red, we've got Buddy safe now. Why bother about her? Buddy can tell us nothing. Our only chance is to get the truth from her. I can't let him get away with Cortland. I got a better plan. Get to the cab quick. I'll tell you why we're trailing him. Speak up. What's your part in this affair? Who wants to know? Our chief wants to know. And what he wants, he gets. What a man. And who might he be? Wouldn't you like to know? You're going to answer some questions. You're going to answer the questions, mister. Where did you take Cortland? Thank you. 
You better close up on them. And when they get in the tunnel, pass them. Where's the fire? It's not a fire. It's a kidnapping. That's far ahead. Look. There's a chance for us. No speed tickets in that way. Well, I'll be sick. What's your name? I got your message. What's up? Well, I've got a surprise for you, boss. Yeah? What is it? Wait until you see it. Isn't there somewhere? 
where we can find out where he is and who's behind all this plotting? It's that Mogul taxi gang. I know it. Yes, but we can't prove it. Hello, independent. Huh? What? Hold the phone. It's for you, miss. Hello? It's Buddy. Where is he? Where are you, Buddy? I don't dare say. You'll tell Red Grange and he'll try to kill me. Get on the other phone quick and trace his call. Someone is coaching him what to say. Keep him talking until we can follow the call. Why do you say that? Have you regained your memory? That was just a stall, to make him think I wasn't dangerous. We shouldn't have phoned from here. They may be smart enough to trace this call. They've traced this call, but his life won't be safe from Grange. He's hung up. Any luck, Tom? What's that, Supervisor? Yeah? Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, oh, say, what kind of candy do you like? Okay, you'll get a barrel of it. What did I tell you? He's at the Mogul office. Call the drivers and let's go get him. We can't do it that way. They'll get wise and run. I've got to get in and find him alone. How? How would you like to bust up a mogul taxi in a good cause? Boy, I'd, I'd like to bust up a mogul taxi even in a bad cause. Hey, now, now who's going to get hurt? You never can tell. Well, come on, boy. If it's a battle, let, let, let's go. With you. Independent taxi. Both cars completely wrecked. Well, how did it happen? Have we got grounds for damage suit? Well, it happened this way. I was going up to Vision Street when a car turns in on my left. Get up just a minute, will you? I'll show you how it happened. This chair is me, see? Well, the other car's coming in from this side. I have the right of way, and he whams right into me. Take a look at the car. I'll help you escape. But I for the minute. Uh, Don't stop to argue. Your life depends on speed. Well, I trick, I tell you. Sound the alarm. Quick. Hey, what's the matter? All right, what's the matter, boss? Listen. Follow that car that just left there and stop it. No matter what you have to do, stop it. So, you let him get away, did you, you? He escaped. It'll go hard with you, Brady. Understand? Oh, but you don't understand oh. how it happened. I don't understand. They said they were my friends. You, who are you? Don't you remember me, buddy? I'm your old roommate. I'm Red Gray. Red Grange, the man wants to kill me. This is true, buddy. I'm your friend. No, you're not. Let me go. You can't kill me. I won't let you. I won't let you do it here. I won't. I won't.
office of a taxi company in a college town, Barbara Cortland is anxiously awaiting word of her brother Buddy, who has been kidnapped by a gambling ring. Meanwhile, Red Grange, a famous football star whom the gambling ring have disgraced and barred from the game, has rescued Buddy Cortland from his captors. Buddy has lost his memory as the result of a blow on the head and believes Red is his enemy. What's the matter with you? Independent taxi. Both cars completely wrecked. Well, how did it happen? Is that grounds for damage to? Well, it happened this way. I was going up to Vision Street when a car turns in on my left. Get up just a minute, will you? I'll show you how it happened. This chair is me, see? Well, the other car's coming in from this side. I have the right of way. And he whams right into me. Take a look at the car. Wait, now I'll help you escape. But I suppose a man is a... Don't stop to argue. Your life depends on speed. Well, it's a trick, I tell you. Sound the alarm. Quick. Stop it. No matter what you have to do, stop it. So, you let him get away, did you, you? He escaped, it'll go hard with you, Brady, you understand? Oh, but you don't understand oh. how it happened. I don't understand. They said they were my friends. Who are you? Don't you remember me, buddy? Believe me, just ask him who he is. You're making a serious charge, young man. Who are you? I'm Buddy. Buddy. I. I don't remember. They didn't tell me. I'd rather take a beating than to go back without him. We ain't got a chance now. Psychopathic for observation. You better notify his family. He'll drop me off at the independent taxi office. I'll get in touch with his sister. Okay. The boy said it was Biff Thompson's car that Grange drove into the garage. How did he get it from Biff? And where is Biff? Well, what difference does it make? What a prize bunch of saps I've got on my payroll. Don't you know Thompson has evidence right on him that was sent just for keeps? You need a report. You let him get away, didn't you? Oh, the cops got caught him. They sent him to the psychopathic. And you let him get away with that? Knowing they'll bring back his memory? But well, what could we do? If they couldn't do anything then, you'll do something now. But what? Get down there and get him. I don't care how, but get him. Take it. Welcome, Taxi. It's the Thompson. Where is he? Where are you, Biff? What happened? I'm at the independent taxi garage. Tied up. I've been trying for two hours to get to this phone so I could use it. 
Take it easy. We'll have you out of there in a few minutes. You better. They're planning to sweat me for info. And believe me, I ain't taking a rock for any of you first. We'll get you out of there, only don't spill anything. I want it to get down here in time. But if you don't... Do as I tell you. Sit tight and keep your mouth shut. Get down there, you two, and turn Thompson loose. What about getting caught? Back and wait. Thompson's got a yellow one and tends to squeal. Yeah? Wait. What a break. This is our chance to get Grange out of the running for keeps. Put him behind bars till we're in the clear. How do you mean? Listen. Hey, listen, you fellas. We're going to get Biff. Do you get me? All right, get going. Everything's all right, but he's safe in the hands of the police. Huh? Police? The police? They're holding him for observation. You're to notify your family physician. While you're phoning, I'll change out of these clothes. Oregon Game? Yes, what's the matter? The best player on the team. I, I think so. Why? Let's see that. My gosh, that, that, that looks like money. It, it feels like money. It is money. Where'd you get it? In that chauffeur's cab. It may be all right, but it looks suspicious. Open it. Go ahead, open it. You think we ought to? Well, think oh. what it may mean to you and Buddy and the team. Sure, go, go ahead. Let's see what's in it. Burns is sold out. He's throwing today's game. Did you bring in the driver of that taxi I smashed? Did I bring... <laughs> did, 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 did I ever for failure? Boy, I got him right there in the old stock room, waiting to be quizzed, to be quipped, for you to talk to him. You're searching if you want to, but I'll tell you in advance that he's not. Uh, wait, let go of me. Hey, Come on, you guys, get a hold of that. Come on! 
Well, any of you want to see him? I haven't seen the sight of him. It's strange where he could have gone to. Here he comes now. Close those gates. Is that the guy we're looking for? Get him! There's another passenger for the mogul cab, Jerry. <laughs> I'll, I'll put this one in the cab and, and start, start the, the, the meter going. Hey, well, boys, uh, let that be a lesson to you. And don't fool around with this b -b 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 baby anymore, because I'm plenty to t tell. There's another passenger for the mobile cab, Jerry. Well, we certainly did our st st stuff, didn't we? Now, listen. It said, many thanks, but the attached driver didn't have any information I could use anyway. <laughs> Drag the lawn to one of your taxi wars, eh? Well, get that. The next time you try it, I'll pinch the whole mob of you. Call the office. I got a lot of things to talk over with you two. A lot of things. Come on. But I've got to speak to Coach Bradley of the Baxter team. This is Red Grange talking. I found out today's game is going to be thrown. I'm sorry, Mr. Grange, but that coach is done left for the football field. Yeah, but you might catch him, but he sure drives a fast car. Thanks. The coach has gone, but I may be able to get to him before the game. I, I don't get your idea, Red. If Burns is taking a bribe, it gives your team a better chance to win, don't it? Football teams want to win their game. They don't want them thrown in their lap. That's not sport. Have you got a motorcycle I can borrow? Oh, sure. Two or three, Red. Come on. Oh, gee, boss. We couldn't help it. Anyway, Biff is back and no harm has been done. Say, 
say. Grand just got the lowdown on Burns selling out, and he's headed for the game to tip him off. Are you sure? Yes. I was listening in on that line that we tapped into the independent office, and I heard Grand say... Oh, so no harm's been done, eh? We might just as well pack up and clear out. We're through. There's one chance to win. Grange is going by a motorcycle, and he's just left. Get into a car, get on the road ahead of him, and stop him. I don't care what you do, but stop him. Come now. Here's where Mr. Gray gets out of our game for peace. famous football star has been kicked off the team and expelled from college through the clever scheming of crooked gamblers. Red is shielding the real culprit, his pal, Buddy Cortland, who has lost his memory as the result of a blow on the head. Buddy has been spirited away by a mysterious cripple whose actions stamp him as an enemy of Red and Buddy. Barbara Cortland, Buddy's sister, shares Red's anxiety about her brother, but does not know the facts in the case. Still loyal to his college team, Red has discovered evidence that a player on an opposing team has accepted a bribe to throw a game. While Red is hurrying to the football field to expose the gambler's plotting, agents of the gambling ring are preparing to stop him and recover the damning evidence. There's one chance to win. Grange is going by a motorcycle and he's just left. Get into a car, get on the road ahead of him and stop him. I don't care what you do, but stop him. Here he comes now. Here's where Mr. Gray gets out of our game. We were driving by and saw him lying here. Well, I guess all I can do is call a receiving hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Your paper. Thanks. You 
cave to take Mr. Cortland home. Mr. Cortland is in 108. Thank you. Hurry up and get him out. I'll stay here and watch. Oh, Barbara, Miss Cortland. Well, I didn't expect to see you here. Why, I came to take Bunny home. What are you doing here? I heard that Red Grange had been badly injured and came to see what I could do. Red hurt? What happened? I can understand how you feel, Barbara. Let's go find out. Everything's all right. This is your sister. We've come to take you home. Don't try to remember anything now, buddy. Just take it easy. Hello, Barbara. Oh, Hello, Hello Red. Is he badly hurt? Why, there's some bruises, but we don't know what the internal damage is. We'll keep him here a couple of days to make sure. A couple of days, sir? I'll be gone in a couple of minutes. Oh, but Red, you mustn't. I can't stay here. I've got to get down to the game and stop Todd Burns from playing on the Baxter team. Stop Todd Burns? Why, what do you mean? He's to the gambling ring. He intends to throw the game. That's a pretty strong statement, Red. Can you prove it? Certainly. I've got the evidence here in my coat. Give me Hempstead, 1121. One. Quick. I think you'd better get the doctor. I'm afraid he's out of his mind. Hello, Jerry. Come pick me up at the emergency hospital at once. And hurry. He might do himself an injury. I'll tell the doctor at once. Yeah, I'll meet you on the corner. Make it snappy. Well, so long, Red. I'm going to help Barbara take Buddy home. Goodbye, Red. Goodbye. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to the football game. There'll be another game next week. What you need is rest and quiet. Sorry, but I've got to go. Take it easy. Don't excite yourself. Come on, old man. Get back to bed. I'm going out of here. Nobody's going to stop me. Yes, miss. His sister came with a family doctor to take him home. It must have been that blonde woman. No, she wasn't blonde. She was a brunette. Where did that cab go to? Huh? Yeah, that cab that just came flying in here. Officer, cabs come flying in and flying out of here with the hundreds all day long. I have the awfulest job trying to keep track of them. 
You're not as dumb as you look. Okay, Chief, I've got six men here beside Mullins and myself. Send for more. You'll need them. Crane's got away from here and he's on his way to the stadium. Stop him. Okay. Hey, listen, you fellas. I want you to get this straight. Mr. Bradley, but surely that exhibition should prove to you that something is wrong. I know Burns has been bought. I had the evidence, but it was taken away from me. Strange, I'm not going to take your unsupported word on this charge. It looks as if you were sore at your own team and objected to their winning. Now get off the field and don't bother me again. The other half of this $500 bill will be paid you when Baxter has lost today's game with Clay. The envelope is addressed to Mr. Todd Burns. Burns? Who gave you that money? Who gave you that money? Who gave you the money that was found on you? Never mind that. Who gave you that money? Who gave you that money, Burns? Yeah, who Where's gave it to you? Where'd you get it, Burns? Well, How about like that money? We want to know where you got that, Burns.
Oh, you did frame Burns, eh? And you stooped to murder to save your worthless hide. No, I didn't do it. The lights went out when I grabbed him. That's all I know. No one was near him but you. Someone phone for the police. You mean you're accusing me of murder? My duty to hold you and everyone in this room till the police arrive. <laughs> Red Grange, a famous football star who has been expelled from college and thrown off the team, finds evidence that another football player has been bribed by a crooked gambling ring. He hopes by this evidence to expose the gamblers and prove himself innocent of the charges on which they framed him. Here's the evidence I told you about. It proves that Burns deliberately threw today's football game. This is a frame-up, Coach. Shut up! The other half of this $500 bill will be paid you when Baxter has lost today's game with Clay. The envelope is addressed to Mr. Todd Burns. Burns, who gave you that money? Who gave you that money? Who gave you the money that was found on you? Never mind that. Who gave you that money? Who gave you that money, Burns? Yeah, who gave, gave it to you? Money? Where'd you get it, Burns? Well, I'd like that money. We want to know where you got that, Burns. No, I didn't do it. The lights went out when I grabbed him. That's all I know. No one was near him but you. Someone phoned for the police. You mean you're accusing me of murder? My duty to hold you and everyone in this room till the police arrive. be long, Mr. Elton. No hurry. I hope you find some clue to your brother's disappearance. My last hope.
What's all the excitement? Red Grange has just killed Todd Burns in the locker room. you here? Oh, I know it's against the rules, but I must get into my brother's room. Surely you don't expect to find Buddy there. No, but I'm hoping to find some clue to his disappearance. You poor child. Certainly I'll let you into his room. Come, Coach. Todd Byrne of the Baxter team has been murdered. Murdered? Why, who did it? Red Grange. Red Grange? Red. I'd better go. Just close the door when you leave. I'll never think of looking for me here in my old room. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. But what brings you here? Well, I thought that among Buddy's things, I might find some sort of clue to the people who kidnapped him. The faint hope, but we can look. by whoever bribed him to keep him from squealing. And if we can find out who did it, we'll have the gang that spirited Buddy away. Oh, Red, it's too terrible. Buddy may have met with the same fate. No, no, I don't believe that. Buddy is still alive. And if I can keep my freedom, I'll find him. Calendar hasn't been changed since the day Buddy and I left for the game, where our troubles began. Roberts, manual 4801. Did Buddy have a friend named Roberts? Why, not that I know of. I'm going to take a long chance. Manual 4801. Hello. Is Mr. Roberts in? That's funny. Somebody's asking for Robert. The name we used on that Buddy Cortman deal. Wait a minute. Hello, who wants Roberts? An old friend of his. Well, he isn't in just now. Leave your number and I'll have him call. No, thanks. I'll call again. I'm sure I've heard that voice before. I've got it. It's the mobile taxi office. That's likely their private number. I'll try the regular one. Oh, Central, give me mutual, 4411. Local taxi company. Wrong number. The same voice answered. My hunch was right. I'm going to the mobile cab company, and when I get there, somebody's going to talk. Oh, but Red, you can't do that. The police will be looking for you. If I could only... Well, the last time we found off three was going over that way. Hey, fellows. I think you'll find the man you're looking for up in that room. I cool. saw him go in that window. Come on, let's go. Don't close that door. Why did you shut it? She's trying to hide him. Pardon me, miss. 
but we have reasons to believe there's a man in that room. Who is this man that I'm accused of shielding? Red Grain. Here he is! I got him! you were a friend of Red. Red? Why, I never dreamed it was he they were after. Welcome to Taxi Company. Okay, Chief. This is Brady talking. Granger's wise with a private phone, and he's heading for your office. He's just escaped from the cops. They're after him for murder. Yes, murder. Now get this. According to law, he can be shot on sight. Right, Chief. We'll be laying for him. What a break. For once, we've got the law behind us. What do you mean? Come on, I'll tell you. You and I'd watch that side door. Come on, get going. Hey, listen, you folks. There's a rumble coming. You two cover the front door and don't let anybody in. Not anybody. Hey, you. Stand out the back door and bring anybody that tries to crash in. Okay, I got you. One yell out of you and it's your last. Put your hands on the arms of that chair. Hey, you two. What became of the bird I left here? Search me, I don't know. Ah, oh, well, you keep your eye on this spot. That mug gets in here is a good one. I came here to get certain information, and you're the one that's going to give it to me. Yeah? Well, I ain't talking. You won't talk, eh? Hey, you ain't gonna burn me with that, are you? Who slipped that bribe money to burn? Who killed him to keep him from squealing? Who's at the head of your gambling ring? Oh, you won't talk, eh? Yeah? Oh, I can't talk, or they'd kill me if I did. Answer my I question! Don't, 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 I'll go! I'll go! All right, I'll 
I'll give you a chance. Now come clean. Come on, what's the stalling? I don't know who's at the head of it. I get my orders over the telephone. You're lying. Where are you holding Buddy Cortland? I don't know. They told me they took him to a private hospital somewhere. What's the matter, boss? I don't know. This is Jerry. What? Trouble? Well, 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 well I'll, I'll, I'll be right over. Hey, Ray, Reddy's in trouble over at the Mogul. There's going to be a fight. Woo -wee. a famous football star, but now disgraced and expelled from college, Red Grange is trying to clear his name and convict the crooked gamblers who caused his downfall. Red's former teammate, Buddy Cortland, has lost his memory as the result of an attack by the gambling ring. Red, searching for Buddy, has followed a clue to the garage of the Mogul Taxi Company and has fallen into a trap set by George Elton, the unsuspected head of the gambling ring, whose agents operate the taxi company. Red's pal, Jerry, part owner of a rival taxi company, has brought his men to Red's assistance. Barbara Cortland, Buddy's sister, has followed Red to the garage. Hovering like a vulture over the fight is a mysterious cripple whose actions stamp him as a deadly enemy of Red and Buddy Cortland.
We must follow him. Yeah, but, but, but there's no use. He, he'll be gone before we get go, before we get rolling. Oh, but it's the cripple we saw at the deserted house. Yeah? He may be taking men out there. Turn the fellow loose, why don't you, so I can doctor them birds. What birds? Well, the ones that Red Grange put on my back with a red-hot iron. Oh, don't touch it. It's a fire, I tell you. Why, there's not a mark on you. Not a mark? What do you mean? It's burning down by my bell line like I have a hot coal inside my shirt. Why, you're not burnt, you yellow whelp. Grange showed you a hot iron and branded you with a piece of ice to make you talk. He wanted you to talk, huh? And you got scared and coughed up all you know. No, I didn't, Bob. I swear I didn't. Well, he couldn't make me tell anything if he burnt my eyes out. No? Let's see about that. I'm going to turn you loose, Mullins, so you can go find Grange and quiet him. Put him where he won't horn in anymore, understand? But if you miss, or I find you told him anything... Oh, I didn't tell him anything, boss. And don't you worry. I'll take care of Grange. You just turned me loose. All right, I'm tired. You may as well lie still. You need rest. And you're going to get it. I know the kind of rest you'll give me. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Turn me loose. You've no right to hold me prisoner. I've got work to do. Oh, no. <laughs> you interfere with my plans when you are free. Besides, you need a long, deep rest. <laughs> I need nothing of the sort. Oh, yes. Long, deep rest, uh, and perhaps uh, a little operation on the brain. Your memory's too good. But tell me, you fiend. <laughs> Let me out of here. You see? <laughs> the least thing excites you. Ah, but we'll soon remedy that. <laughs> I'll return presently with the necessary instruments. <laughs> Here we are. It looks as if we're on the right track. Yeah. Gee, I'm scared. Scared? There's nothing to be a scared about. Uh, follow me. Too bad, it's locked. Come on. Try it again. It's no use. Come on. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Do you want to frighten people to death? Have you got a flashlight? Yes, I do, do, do got a flashlight, but I don't have think... Have you got a flashlight? Yes, I have, but I don't think we should be coming into strange houses without knocking at the door, without 
ringing the bell or something. Listen, if you're scared, give me the light and I'll go alone. Scared? scared. I, I'm not scared, scared, but like all good taxi cab drivers, I'm very skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm careful. Don't pump the bush, maid. Wait till I get the flashlight out. Time for the dog to be howling. Oh, pick up your light. Yeah. I can keep saying for the finest. Quite like I could get a match. It does the dog howling. Oh, it pro probably fell through this broken place in the floor. Yeah, well, maybe it did. I don't know. Look out, I'll look for, for it. Wait another match. Uh, I'm not going to be wasting all my matches on you. Oh, give me the matches. Hey, I, 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 I wonder what can be in here anyhow. I, oh! Oh! Oh, somebody's got a hole. Oh! Oh, 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 <laughs> Red! Barbara, you shouldn't have come here. What did you do with it? Oh, I saw that beam take you away. I took a chance on this being the place he would bring you. How did you get in there? Can you open the door in between? No, it's locked. And so is the one to the hall. I'm a prisoner. And I've simply got to get free to help you. If there's anything in there you can throw me to help me get loose? murder's house. That's the knife that Burns was killed with.
O. I. N. G. Come <laughs> any trace of either Grange or Cortland. Say, I just picked up a message on that line we tapped to the independent office. Grange and Cortland's sister are held prisoner at the haunted house. Who's holding them? I don't know if the call didn't say, but Jerry phoned in for help. Let me take a bob and go out and settle everything, Cap. Yeah. You've done enough fixing. This time I'll handle it myself, and it'll be handled for keeps. Mike, boss, be careful. If you even check that stuff, you're telling me what it'll do. Whose idea was this in the first place? Our only chance lies in being quiet. I'll get into the hall and unlock your door. Then we'll make a run for it.
Red Grange, a famous football star, has been barred from the game and expelled from college through the scheming of crooked gamblers. His pal, Buddy Cortland, a victim of the gambling ring, has lost his memory. Red, searching for Buddy, has followed a clue to a deserted house where he has been attacked by agents of the gambling ring. Buddy's sister, Barbara, is locked in an upper room, and Red is trying to rescue her. Meanwhile, George Elton, the unsuspected head of the gambling ring, is taking desperate measures to keep Red from unmasking him. In the shadows outside the house is Red's friend, Jerry, awaiting help for which he has phoned. This is the plane, all right, but the pilot got away. We'd better get over to the roadhouse before something happens to Buddy. Buddy? He's being held prisoner over at the roadhouse. Get under cover, Barbara. Jerry and I will round him up. Come on, Jerry. No, I, I, I think I'll stay here and go, go guard Mr. Portland. Jerry! Did, did, did you get a look at him ready? No, he was masked by his helmet and goggles. Gosh, I wonder who it is. Oh, look, he's coming back. Hey, Red. Hey, Jerry. Carl, this is luck. This ain't luck. I vote for this tactic. The Red Raven Roadhouse, quick. Not till I settle with that little weasel for what he called me over the phone. This is no time for personal rows, Tom. That can wait. Yeah, that's what I, I say. That that can wait. Oh, get in. All right. Yeah. Hurry up. And I fix you. I'll fix you, you dirty little skunk. That's what I do for you. Welcome, taxi. 
Oh, hello, Chief. What's happened? Plenty. Cortland's being held at the Red Raven. Granger's on his way there. Stop him if you can. Tell the boys at the roadhouse to keep their eyes open and stand by till I get there. Okay, boss. Hello, hello. Wex is 4321 and make it snappy. <laughs> the very last thing we would do, my dear. <laughs> I'll give the order to this crew. Now, <laughs> don't let your desire to command run away with your good judgment. <laughs> You're getting ready to pop. That Grange, ain't it? It sure is. Let's get him. Better not make any move until the boss comes. It might interfere with his plans. Well, then, 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 now that we're here, what, what, what are we going to do, do? The first thing to do is find out where Buddy is. Yeah? Now, you and Tom stay outside. Uh huh. Miss Cortland and I will go in first. I see. And if we don't find him, I'll give you the high sign, Jerry, and you come in. Yeah? Come along with me at the door, and I'll explain it on the way. It's a taxi. What name? Uh, name? Yeah. Well, uh, oh, he, he he didn't give a name, but uh, he's a, he's a he's a funny looking guy. He he walks just uh, st stooped over like that with a with a cane. He uh, he looks like a carpenter's rule. <laughs> Say, look, you could get him right away for me, will you? Because he's a funny old crab, but he generally tips good if he if he gets what he wants. I'll uh, I'll be outside. Go to the old man upstairs and tell him there's a taxi waiting for him down here. Maybe you'd better get outside the Tom's taxi stand so you can phone the police if things get too hot. But you, what about... Never mind me. You'll be of more service to us all outside. your phone for us here. Oh, the taxi? That's fine. And thanks very much. Yes, sir. What does that mean? There's nobody here ordered any taxi. Means only one thing. Somebody wants to find out what room we're in. He's probably listening in the corridor de now.
We didn't see anybody. Who do you suppose is trailing us? Probably Grange. He knew we were coming here. Then we've got to get Buddy out of here quick. On the contrary. There's more reason than ever for keeping him here. Grange is liable to be here any minute. What do you mean? Haven't you heard the old rhyme? Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly. <laughs> and I don't look unlike a spider, do I, dear? <laughs> We're leaving with our, our guest right away. Did you hear me say we're leaving? Yeah, we heard, but he said different. Are you going to obey his orders or mine? They seem to think something horrible might happen to them if they refuse. Oh, you. You and your threats. You make me laugh. I'm going out and get some men with backbones. And when I do... Well, when you do, please let me know. <laughs> a very good sort, Mr. Grange. Don't give the alarm. Unless you want to start a row, that'll be a classic. I don't intend to give the alarm. I imagine from now on, you and I'll be working together. Oh, I don't blame you for doubting me, but I find I've been trying to handle this affair from the wrong angle. What I need is somebody on the level. Are you willing to help me? I'm willing to listen. I don't like the looks of things. Something must have happened to Red. They told me if he didn't come out to call the police. Give me police headquarters, quick. So you're Buddy's wife? Yes, and I find I'm really in love with him. And I'm afraid for him. I'm afraid of what that human scorpion in there might do. Is there any other way into that room except from the hall? Yes, along the porch roof to the window. my pal out of your slee hand. Come and get him, boys. He's unarmed. They make a move at you, I'll get. No. Men like him don't fight with guns. Come and get him, boys. I'll take my chances. Captured Red Grange. He's wanted for the murder of Todd Burns. Grange. That's him, all right. Buddy, I'm so glad you're safe. Get away from me. I don't know you. Buddy! Don't waste your time on me. Cortland was here and they've escaped with him. You're smart, Grange, but you can't throw us off the tracks with that yarn. Look, you under arrest for the murder of Todd Burns. This evidence clinches the case against you. Well, it's ridiculous. I didn't kill Todd Burns. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. Buddy! Get away from me. I don't know you.
once a famous football star, but now disgraced and expelled from college, Red Grange is trying to clear his name and convict the crooked gamblers who caused his downfall. Red has followed a clue to a roadhouse and is attempting to rescue his college pal, Buddy Cortland, from the power of a mysterious enemy. Buddy, who has lost his memory as a result of a blow on his head, is also a victim of the gambling ring. Another of their victims, a football player named Burns, has been murdered to keep him from talking. And Red, accused of the mysterious crime, is being hunted by the police. Buddy's sister, Barbara, is also at the roadhouse, trying to find her afflicted brother. time on me. Cortland was here and they've escaped with him. You're smart, Grange, but you can't throw us off the tracks with that yarn. Look, you under arrest for the murder of Todd Burns. And this evidence clinches the case against you. Boy, that's ridiculous. I didn't kill Todd Burns. Oh, come on, come on. Buddy! Get away from me. I don't know you. Please help me. Oh, it's Red they're shooting at. They'll never get him. Come on, let's go after Buddy. Hey, we want that car. There's a murder getting away. He stole our car. We can't help ourselves. They're officers of the law. We're in left with a car like this. We'll soon overtake him. You know the car. You better drive. Headquarters calling all cars, calling all cars. Red Grange wanted for murder. Red Grange wanted for murder. Has stolen police car number 14. Car number 14.
Buddy Corton and escaped from the psychopathic ward has been kidnapped in a blue and gray Lincoln touring car. Kidnapper is a deformed man about 50 years old, known by the name of Foley. Taken to the brush. We'll have to smoke him out. Grange has abandoned the stolen police car and is now driving a blue and gray touring car. The, the blue and gray Lincoln, just half past the market, headed west. You can't let him die. What happened to him? No time to talk. You've got to save him. Notify his sister, Miss Barbara Cortland, Hempstead, 1121.
they won't bother us anymore. What are you doing here? Why aren't you out after Red Grace? Well, I tried to stop him off, but he wrecked a cab. But don't worry, the cops will get him. The cops? You fool, don't you realize if the cops get him, our goose is cooked? Range knows that you two bribed Todd Burns. He suspects that one of you murdered him. And you'll talk to save his neck unless you stop him. Didn't expect to see me, did you? You, huh? Well, I'll finish you off right now. Not if you want to save your own neck, you won't. That goes for you too, Elton. What do you mean? I mean that got Buddy Cortland in St. Agnes Hospital. The doctors are operating on his brain. If he recovers his memory, you'll tell the police that you bribed him just as you bribed Todd Burns. Say, what are you trying to do, blackmail us? <laughs> I'm in this as deep as you are. I had Buddy Cortland in my power. Red Grange got him away from me. Now, if he lives to talk, means my finish as well as yours. What are you getting at? Come on, talk quick! I mean that we've got to silence Red Grange and Buddy Cortland. Well, what's your proposition? Let's sit down and talk it over. On the line, we tapped into the independent office. Give me the phone. Hello? Miss Cortland's here now. I'll call her to the phone. Range is phoning the hospital from the independent office. Come on, we'll go get him right now. Just a minute. <laughs> that's the kind of a bonehead play that's got you fellas into a jam. Wait till we find out what Red Grange is going to do. <laughs> Hello? Red, you shouldn't expose yourself like this. You can't tell who may be listening in. I have to know about Buddy. Is he still alive? Is there any hope? Well, the doctors say that the cutting open of his skull has relieved the pressure on his brain, and that when he comes out of the anesthetic, they believe he'll be in his right mind again. I'm coming over to see him. Well, no, no, Red. You're mad to think of such a thing. You mustn't come here. The police will get you if you do. I'll have to risk it. I've got to be there when he comes to. Ranger's office went to the hospital to see Buddy Cortland and make him talk. That's our chance to get them both. <laughs> now, listen. 24, 18, 3. That oh boy, Red. How is he? His memory's coming back. He spoke Red's name a minute ago. Oh, that's splendid. I'm so glad for you. No shooting, you fool. This has got to look like an accident.
I do anything for you? Yeah, keep still. Once a famous football star, but now disgraced and expelled from college, Red Grange is trying to clear his name and convict the crooked gamblers who caused his downfall. Red's only hope of unmasking his enemies depends upon the recovery of his pal, Buddy Cortland, who is in the hospital out of his mind, a victim of the gambling ring. Another victim of the gamblers, a football player named Burns, has been murdered to keep him from talking and Red, accused of the mysterious crime, is being hunted by the police. Meanwhile, his college team, crippled by the loss of its brilliant star, is about to meet its most powerful rival in the biggest game of the season. Well, fellas, it's no use my saying anything, except you've got to go in today and win. We've lost two of our best players, but you're a good team. And by working together every minute of the time, holding them, fighting every inch of the way, you'll win. Well, boys, get going. Hello? Mr. Harlow? Yeah, just a minute. Let's see you, folks. Hello? Harlow speaking. Hello, Mr. Harlow. This is Barbara Cortland. Oh, hello, Barbara. How's your brother? That's just what I called you up about. Buddy has been operated upon, and the doctors say that when he comes to, he'll be himself again. Why, oh, sure, I'm glad to hear it. That means we'll have him with us again next year. Do you think we have any chance of beating the Trojans today? We're going up against a marvelous team. And to be honest with you, our chances are pretty slim without the brilliant offensive punch Buddy and Red Grange gave our team. Well, goodbye, and thanks for letting me know. Twenty-four, eighteen, three. That a boy, Red. How is he? His memory's coming back. He spoke Red's name a minute ago. Oh, that's splendid. I'm so glad for you. No shooting, you fool. This has got to look like an accident. Keep still. Drop those guns, quick! You 
Bean, if you've shot Buddy Cortland, come in here. You all right, Barbara? All right, you've got me. But arrest this fella, too. He's a monster that butchered Buddy Cortland. Never mind him. I'm arresting you for the murder of Todd Burns. I didn't kill Todd Burns. Oh, I know. The torn $500 bill and the knife is evidence against me. But this man had the missing half of that bill. And the knife that killed Burns was found in his hangout. It's true, officer. I found the knife, and I saw that man take a torn bill out of his pocket. Say, what is this? You Just told me. Moment, Captain. Where was the knife when you first found it, Miss Coffin? In the pocket of an old coat in the room where you shut me up. Was there anything else in the pocket? Yes. Some snapshot films. Why so? Some snapshot films. Here you are, Captain. Some very interesting snapshots. Why, the picture of the knife handle with fingerprints on it. What's the idea? We know all about these fingerprints, and the Detective Bureau has better pictures than these. And when I get you to headquarters, we'll fingerprint you and compare them. Just a moment, Captain. Here are some more negatives that might save you the trouble. They're the same fingerprints. Where did you get these? They were on the steering stick of the airplane that made a forced landing near the haunted house the night that Grange and Miss Cortland were there. And that plane was Elton. Don't try to stop me. Don't shoot. You kill Miss Cortland. You men down your fire escape. Follow me. Just a minute. Not so fast. Work, Grange. Take charge of him, boys. Is Miss Cortland safe? Well, she looks all right from here. Brad, isn't it wonderful you're free? But I don't understand. If Elton's guilty, what about the fiend that butchered Buddy? Well, I only know what the doctors say. But what you thought was butchery was really a marvelous brain operation. Here's a couple of prisoners you kind of overlooked, Captain. Say, who are you, anyway? My name is Blake. Once Dr. Julian Blake, brain specialist. That's how I was able to perform that operation on Buddy Cortland. Oh, I haven't always been like this. Once, I was just as straight as any man. A paralytic stroke, caused by a sudden shock. That shock was the death of my boy. He committed suicide. He was caught in that damnable mesh, just as Buddy Cortland was. He was a football player, the pride of his team. I am my life. Crooked gamblers got him in their power. They forced him to throw a championship game so that they could win their bets. When my boy realized what he had done, shame it was more than he could stand. 
so he took the quickest way out. And over his dead body, I swore I would run down the men who were guilty for his death. Extra paper, all about the first half of the... Hey, boy, give me a paper. Extra, extra, extra. Oh, Red, if you were only there. Don't talk about it, please. Why not? There's nothing against you now. Don't talk nonsense. I'd have to be reinstated. Why, the and... captain can see the college authorities. All you've got to do is to get out there quick. Boy, you're going to that game in a police car with a siren wide open. outwitting the Trojan team. If the lady's going now, if Grange had been on the field from the start of this game, the score would now be about uh, play 72 and Trojans nothing instead of Trojans 19 and play 14. <laughs> Attaboy, Red. Now, buddy, don't get excited. Red will play the game for both of you till you get well. Six minutes to play. The Trojans still in the lead. Play kicks off to the enemy's 10-yard line. Red Green smashes through the Trojan interference and downs the runner. First down for the Trojans, 10 yards to go. Green just recovered a fumble. 
That gives Clay the ball, but there's very little chance to win the game. The time's too short. But win, lose, or draw, Granger's performance today will go down in football history. Hey! <laughs>